Welcome YouTubers. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. Thank you for joining me today in a full-fledged room tour. So it's been quite some time since I've done a full-fledged room tour, but I generally show my collection throughout each video. So if you're a big follower of the channel, you pretty much know my collection, you know, like it's your own. Because this collection really is kind of our collection. We're building it together. Even if you're not here physically with me, you're here daily in my YouTube content. So today I'm gonna to do a full-fledged room tour. If you saw my room tour from last year, there's a lot of changes that have occurred uh, in this man cave. We've added 80 or 90 new statues and prop replicas. We've added, we've sold a lot. We've got rid of the giant Maji cases here in the middle of the room. So a ton has changed. I'm gonna go into a deep dive of the collection. Uh, we're gonna see what it, all the fuss is about and you know, whatnot. So hope you all enjoy this video. Uh, it's going to be a long one. So, you know, this isn't some tiny little room. I got four bedrooms and I haven't counted how many statues I have. Maybe I should, but last time I counted was over 400. So let's just call it 400 statues, four bedrooms, 1500 square feet. Uh, we have kept every single box. It's up in the garage. I actually sold my wife's car, so I have a lot more box space now. Uh, we don't need two cars anymore, so I got tons of box space now, which is a huge plus. Uh, but let's go ahead and tour the cave and see what we think. So stay tuned. Alrighty, so I thought I'd just show you guys some of the boxes because people always ask, do you keep the boxes? Yes, I freaking do. Uh, so this is a two car garage. That is my attic over there, and I did put a ton of smaller boxes in there because there's a limited entrance, but there's probably 30 small boxes up there. And some of the bigger ones, you know, like that as a shockwave box, massive. And now I have all this as box space, which is really nice because it's going to, you know, help me with all the boxes this year. So I just have the Tesla for now. I uh, don't need a second car. Me and my wife both work from home. We only drive the Tesla and our Mercedes had really good resale value. So we ended up making nearly $20,000 selling that, you know, so really good resale value right now for cars. So I thought it was the best decision to sell that. Uh, but yeah, this is the box collection. <laughs> and this isn't even all of them. I have a lot of Dragon Ball Z boxes under my staircase and in the spare bedroom, which I'm actually gonna be removing all those and putting them in the garage, uh, you know, to free up that bedroom because eventually me and the wife do plan to have a child. That is our uh, goal next year, actually. Uh, we do want to have a, uh, one kid. So let's get to the cave, though. Alrighty, so my man cave is in my basement, of course. Uh, so, of course, as you enter, uh, you see this sign. And anytime I have a guest here, which, to be honest, I'm probably not going to have a lot more guests enter my cave. I don't think I'm going to invite, uh, you know, other people into my cave. I, I just got too much valuables in here. So, but in general, if my family comes over, do not touch. Uh, and there's Raiden, my little best friend. Raiden, say hi to YouTube. Uh, and so here is what we're greeted with. Uh, the Lord of the Rings collection is the first thing we see. Now, my Lord of the Rings is going to be completely rehauled with Prime One Studios. We are going to sell off pretty much every single Sideshow statue. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Lurtz is right here for now, but he will be there. We'll do Prime One Sauron and potentially Balrog versus Gandalf. Depends if it looks good down low. Uh, but... Yeah, uh, so if you are interested in these Lord of the Rings statues, follow the channel. I will be posting them up for sale. As Prime One does enter the collection, these will be going out. Uh, some of them may stay, though. I really love this Gollum and Smeagol statue. Very nice premium format. Uh, this is the exclusive. So this is inside uh, what's called a curio case. It's like a half detolf, has two shelves. And then these shelves that you see here are garage shelves that are Etsy muscle racks from Walmart. I used a black fabric to cover the wood and black painter's tape to cover the little holes. And so, you know, I like this shelf because it holds 800 pounds and you have about 33 inches height right there. We are standard Besta and Stuva. It's very, very limited. It doesn't hold a ton of weight. Uh, I think this looks better and it holds more weight and just looks better. Uh, so here is some of the Lord of the Rings statues. You have the ring wraith on the horse, the Nazgul. You got Frodo. 
the two orcs, the black orc and Moria orc. Uh, and then this is the Weta Balrog. This does light up, but I don't have it plugged in, but very cool little bust. You know, I think overall queen is probably gonna be better and bigger, but this was a lot cheaper and it wall mounts. You got Galadriel, she is the worst of the entire Lord of the Rings collection, but she still uh, does look good in the overall line. Gandalf, he's awesome. Uh, until Prime 1 comes out with theirs, I'll be keeping Gandalf and Saruman. The rest will go. And then here is... Berserker, Lurch, Saruman, Eragon, Legolas, and Gandalf the White. Uh, so Berserker is my favorite of all the One Force I own. Used to be Sauron, but he is sold to a local collector. Lurch is awesome. And then Eragon and Legolas, they're both great. Gandalf the White... So very, very cool. Uh, you know, this is 15 statues from this entire line. Uh, ends right here at the Morgul Lord. And I will be selling that and likely the Nazgul because I'll be getting Prime Ones. And I do love this pair, but ultimately Prime One will win. So I'll probably sell off the Weta. And the fact I'm selling off the Weta may have me consider even selling Balrog to be honest, and just doing Queen's Balrog. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but if I'm selling that one, I'm incompleting my Weta line. But I don't know. Let's wait and see. Uh, then you have the Iron Studios. This is 120th scale. So, you know, this is 1 4th. That is probably 1 5th. And this is 120th scale. Uh, it's quite big. It's actually my favorite Lord of the Rings piece underneath like all this, that's my favorite. That thing is awesome. It's a very epic look diorama. So you have the Nazgul there. And then you have Frodo, Gollum, Sam, a dead human, and two orcs. But it's a very, very cool looking piece. I really like it. Uh, and then we have the one-tenth scale cave troll. Uh, for me, this is the best cave troll in the market. Hoping Prime 1 does a massive one, then I'd sell that and get that because I'd love a massive one. I always regret not buying the 1 4th custom. But this one looks really good. I think it looks awesome. And then you have Smog with the bust. Uh, I've always wanted uh, Azog 1 4th, but nothing's been made. They did tease something at least like two years ago, but it was never made. Uh, Balrog by Weta, that is currently sold on payment plan, so it'll be shipped once the seller pays it off. And then what I'll do is I'll move that there, that there, and I have just all creatures here. And then if Prime 1 Balrog fits, I'd do it right there. If it doesn't fit, potentially have to do it in the big garage shelf, but if it doesn't look good down low, we'll do it top shelf, uh, because I do have space now that I've moved Red Sonia. So that's everything that's underneath. Up top, we do have Prime 1 Sauron in route, so that will be coming in the coming months. So make sure you, if you haven't, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification, because we'll be doing a full unboxing and review of Prime 1 Sauron, as well as Balrog versus Gandalf, which potentially could go right where Lurt's bust is. You know, as well as all the future Prime 1 1 4 skill statues. I'm buying the whole line. I am going balls deep, Prime 1 Lord of the Rings. That is my focus in my collection. So this is a custom life-size bus. This thing is absolutely massive. Uh, let me just uh, show you to scale. So look how big his head is compared to mine. This thing is huge and extremely cool. Uh, so it is made of silicone. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with silicone is, it's usually used in the medical profession for like, you know, breast enhancements and other things, but it has a very lifelike feel to it as well as, you know, not only texture, but uh, the look, it looks very realistic. It's the most realistic you're really going to get with statues. Most statues are made of polystone or resin. This is silicone. You know, even like the mouth, that's silicone. The eyes are glass eyes. This, These particular glass eyes, I believe, are from... Oh, I'm drawing a blank on the name. But these are custom glass eyes that were ordered. Uh, and then this is hand-painted. This is custom, so it's made by Jupe Bongarts. I did make a full unboxing review. This is real, uh, like, military-grade armor. Quite wild. And then I have this custom nameplate I had made uh, for this. It does come with a COA. Very, very awesome piece. You know, a lot of people are really drawn to this bust because of its sheer size. You know, look at it next to your standard bust. It is substantially bigger, uh, and it's very, very impressive.
So currently this is my favorite Lord of the Rings statue. Let's see if Prime One Sauron can top it or, you know, Gandalf versus Balrog. But for the most part in my collection, I like to have everything themed. I like to have scales, uh, for the most part, like matching, you know, like this is all more or less one fourth. And then I like to mix bus in between one fourth or one thirds. And here in my main theater room, which, you know, we'll do a quick pan around, uh, I, the theme more or less is one third and bust up top, one fourth below, at least all over here, as well as a few life size, and then one third and life size over here. And then this wall is like bust and one fourth, you know, all one fourth and bust really over here. But that, that's just how I like to display. I also love displaying movies with my statues, art prints, prop replicas. I really feel like it enhances the display. Uh, that's just my preference. Some people just prefer to have a statue with a blank wall. And if that's your preference, good for you. Uh, you should always display your statues how you like it, not how others like it. So this is how I like displaying my collection. Uh, some people say my collection may be cluttered. For me, it's not. I thought it was a long time ago, yes. Especially when I had all the Maja cases in here and I had so many statues. But I've sold a lot of it. I've decluttered. I've given statues, you know, space to breathe. You know, it's... So I feel like my collection's at a really good uh, point right now where it's just looking really good and I'm really loving it. So for me, it's not cluttered if it is for you. You know, everyone has different preferences uh, on how they like to display stuff. You know, for me, if I have, you know, a few inches between each piece and I can see the entire piece, I think it's fine. Uh, so this is PCS's Lord of Darkness. This is a piece, I never actually thought I'd own this. But when I watched the movie twice, on the second time, I really enjoyed it. First time I was a little confused. Second time I was like, you know, that's actually a really good movie. Uh, and I ended up buying this piece because I think it looks awesome. And it goes great in my collection. It's like a devil-like creature, giant horns. Very cool looking. It's also very big. It, he is kind of a skinnier character, but it's very tall, especially with that staff. And I think it looks great next to Blade. I don't know. I just like the look of that. So... Big fan of this uh, PCS piece. Don't think I'll ever sell it uh, unless, I don't know, uh, maybe PCS Ghostface could replace it if I truly was out of space, but I don't think I'll ever sell that. I really like that piece, and I think it's just unique looking. You know, there's only, I believe, 150 in the world. Uh, then we have ECC Blade, Reaper, Bust, and One Third, and the placard as well as a prop replica. So this was actually my first ECC piece. Uh, that's sort of what got me on that ECC hype train. And I love this bust. Always have, always will. I uh, just love the design of it. You know, this movie was made by Guillermo del Toro. Uh, and I love the designs of the vampires. I love that movie. I still think it holds up as, you know, one of the best vampire movies out there. Uh, and I love Wesley Snipes. The one third was my second ECC piece, uh, first ECC one third, and I was, you know, I'm still incredibly impressed with this. This is just an amazing looking piece. You know, you got a severed head right there. The base does light up. I don't have it plugged in because it's not a super impressive light up. With all the ECC, I do display the COAs in the back. Then here is the placard, which looks awesome. The transformation of the Reaper, as well as a blade weapon. So that's really my blade setup. Uh, ultimately, if there was a blade one third made, I would sell Lord of Darkness or at least move them and do a blade one third there because uh, that is one piece that would 100% come to the collection as long as likeness is there. Uh, then you go into Underworld, which I do feel is very uh, good, like companions next to blade. And if we ever get a Selene one third, I'd move blade over and do Selene right there. Uh, she's definitely one of the key characters I'm missing. Uh, so I'd absolutely want Celine. Uh, so hopefully either ECC, PCS, Prime One Studios, heck, even Queen Studios makes a Celine one-third. It's absolutely mind-boggling that we don't have one. I have seen some life-size silicone busts by Andy Wright that look pretty good, but they just don't hit the mark for that $5,000 price tag. So I ended up not buying it. But I'm very happy with this line. It is one of my favorites in my entire collection. We got the Marcus bust, which is a very underrated bust. This piece is absolutely amazing in person. I did put the HCG Lucian pendant on him. And he has just such incredible eyes. Super, super impressive. This is made of translucent resin, so it gives a more lifelike effect than your standard resin. That is the type of material ECC Elite Creature Collectibles likes to use. 
You have the Marcus one third, which is one of my favorite one third scale statues to date. Still is just absolutely super impressive due to the pose, the wingspan, you know, the detail, uh, everything about this piece just screams grail to me. So huge, huge fan. Always loved this piece. Above you do have Celine throwing stars, a uh, poster. A lot of my posters, people ask where I get them. So I either buy them online or I find images and I just print it out. You know, this is an image I actually just found online, found a high quality image and I printed it at a local print shop near my house. So it costs like 20 bucks to print. Uh, so that's where I got that one, for example. Uh, then you have the Lycan one third, which also is incredibly impressive. This piece is one that when you look at the size, you're like, oh, it's only two feet tall, but it's also like 30 inches wide. And it is a huge piece overall. Incredible paint job. Super, super nice. Really love this pair. I think this still is to date the, you know, best two one third scale companion pieces out there. Uh, then you have the Lycan bus, which was the final one I did get this year. Super, super happy to have this. Absolutely amazing. Love it to death. Uh, very menacing looking and it has quite a good presence because of how much that head protrudes out. So very, very cool. So that is this main wall. And this is one of my bigger walls in my entire collection. Uh, so you can see, you know, that is quite a long wall. And then it really transitions more into even more like true horror. Because I don't really consider Underworld and Blade true horror. I mean, it's vampires and werewolves, yes. But for me, horror, when I think horror, I think Freddy, Jason, Myers, stuff like that. But I still, you know, this still does technically fall under the category of horror. But it's more like monsters and creatures. Uh, but then we do go into my true horror wall. Now, horror is one of my favorite... Uh, lines in my collection i'm a huge fan of horror statues i freaking love them i love the movies uh, me and my wife watch horror movies all the time i love the character designs and you know i really enjoy the statues of them as well and here in the corner we do have blue box hyper which is the name of the studio out of uh peru uh they made this custom silicone pennywise bus this is one of my favorite busts in my collection one of my favorite pieces in my collection uh, it's absolutely mind-blowingly good. In addition, I've added Prime One's base. Uh, you know, that was uh, that happened this year. So just an absolute masterpiece base. Added a It logo, the balloon. You got the SS Georgie boat on the wall. Uh, this bust is silicone with acrylic teeth, glass eyes that do light up, and hand-punched hair. So super, super impressive bust uh, for sure. Uh, then we got the ECC one-third uh this, to me, is an underrated piece. A lot of people don't like it for some reason. Not sure why. I freaking love it. Uh, I think it's awesome. Such a good companion piece. You got the ECC in the sewer with the Georgie, the IT logo, the blood, translucent water, real grass, and then a one-third Pennywise above. And I, I mostly display this portrait because I like having two different portraits. You know, that's the regular. That's the, you know, evil-looking face, the ravenous-looking face. And so every now and then I will display this head, but I like that head in the sewer. I think it just fits better. You know, the statue overall, I think just looks better this way. So this does have glass eyes, super, super impressive. You know, I'm extremely happy with my Pennywise collection. I feel like it's perfect. And so that's really all I need. Then we also have the one tenths underneath. So these look great. You got Pennywise, none, you got Pennywise prop. Uh, underneath, we do have my Conjuring, uh, the beginning of it, really. So you have the Warrens, Demonologist, Witchcraft. And then a Curio, which is just there to really replicate Annabelle getting out of her case. You have a lock on the ground. You have the sign, the card. I think it looks great. And then Annabelle, this is by Trick or Treat Studios. Uh, got a chair off Amazon.com, and it fits perfectly in my shelf, and I love it. So very creepy looking. Looks great. Uh, you know, I love Annabelle, love the movies, and I think this little display I created looks awesome. And of course, that transitions into The Nun, the other part of the Conjuring universe. Uh, Nun was one of the coolest uh, things to come out of Conjuring for me. Huge fan of Conjuring 2, that's probably my favorite one. That is where Nun comes in. I also love the Nun movie, huge fan of that movie. This is also by Blue Box Hyper, who made the Pennywise. Absolutely phenomenal bust. Silicone, glass eyes, acrylic tea, silicone tongue. Just freaking mind-blowingly cool. I did add that little Nun 3D prop. And we did get the Nun 
art print as well. This is an actual art print, like someone painted this, uh, a painted, you know, on like wood and whatnot. Very, very impressive. This, uh, I forget the artist name, but I bought off Etsy and it was, uh, came out of like Russia, I think, but very, very impressive. I just love that display. Underneath we have a custom Chucky. Uh, so I do have a video on this. A lot of people ask about this Chucky. They love it. I do too. I think it's the best Chucky in the market, at least for like a Chucky 1-2 version. Got the batteries from Trick or Treat Studios. He's holding the knife as well as holding the uh, doll. And he's also wearing the necklace with the, you know, Ambadol pendant <laughs> drawing a blank but yeah this is a very impressive chucky i love the face the face is just killer the clothing is awesome you know fits great in that shelf which works really good you now having my two dolls next to each other annabelle's a lot bigger than chucky you know as she is in the movie these are both true life size so they both look absolutely awesome here's a further look from a distance uh and then underneath we'll just quickly show this to you we got Blitzway Khaleesi, you know, in collaboration with Prime One Studios. Mm -hmm. Amazing piece. One of my favorite one four scale statues, actually. She does have her three dragons. I also have the dragon eggs. So this piece is huge and incredibly impressive. Very, very nice. Next to it, you have Kong vs. Skullcrawler by Prime One. Awesome piece. Very, very cool. We did put a Targaryen plaque right there. Next to it, we have the Mummy and Medusa. So very, very cool, mythological creatures, sort of whorish. Uh, but this mummy is a custom by Dream Figures. Also one of my favorite one four scale statues, this and Khaleesi for sure. Uh, then Sideshow, Perseus. This is probably the worst Sideshow piece I own. Well, not, I would put Galadriel and Frodo worse, but of the non-Lord of the Rings, it's probably the worst just because the likeness and face is off. He's not looking in the right direction. But Medusa head is cool, and it fits next to my Medusa statue quite well. This is by ARH Studios. Still the best Medusa in the market, in my opinion. I do like this more than even ECC's newest Medusa. I just don't like the design of that, the two legs, and I don't know. I love the ARH one. It still holds up as a classic, you know, like old school grill. So very, very cool. Uh, yeah, that's all that's underneath here. Above, we got Prime One Ash. Huge fan of this piece. One of my favorite one-third scales in my entire collection. Uh, I personally like this head and then probably the demonic head the most. I, I generally switch his heads out quite often, though, because I love all the heads, although one of them I'm not a fan of. The one where he's like one eyebrow raised. Don't like that head. All the other ones I love, though. Uh, very, very impressive piece. Absolutely massive. This shelf is 24 inches deep and about 25 to the wall and then 48 inches width. So you can see this taking up half the entire shelf, really. So very impressive. You know, you got the possessed deadite in the base, his cut off hand holding the Kandarian dagger. I like it like that. The book of a life-size custom book there. And that book is more of a concept one. It's not true to the movie per se, but it's very similar to the book actually in the TV series, uh, the stars, you know, Ash vs. Evil Dead. So I really like that book because of that because I love the TV show. Trick or Treat life-size Kandarian dagger as well as a custom wall-mountable Evil Dead 2 skull. That's by the Evil Shed as well as just a little Evil Dead 2 printed out logo I got. So I really like my Evil Dead display. I think it's perfect. And one little Easter egg per se, if you look through here, you can actually even see an additional skull. I put it right there sort of as an Easter egg, because I don't really like it right here. But it's kind of like a little Easter egg. You're looking behind the skulls looking through the window. So kind of an Easter egg thing I did there. Next, you go into my Freddy, Jason, and Michael Myers display. So that is it, and that is complete. Uh, not really adding anything. We also have a screen mask there. Uh, but, you know, all this right here is Elite Creature Collectibles. Uh, we have the Jason bust. Now, I do have a custom mask uh, by Crash Creations. Uh, huge fan of this mask. I wasn't a fan of the ECC mask. I think they did a terrible job on it. But the bust itself is amazing. Uh, you know, yeah, he just has one hand holding this machete, and this machete is real metal. 
really good effect on the hand, you know, very realistic. The eyes are just so incredible. And this mask really brings this bust to another level. Very impressive. You got water stains throughout it, a plaque, a giant wooden, like, tree-like base. So, very, very cool. Uh, you have the Welcome to Camp Crystal Lake. It even says Friday the 13th on that. Uh, that is from Spirit Halloween. It's like 20 bucks, but it's wood and it looks great. Uh, you have the ECC one third Jason, uh, very impressive piece, huge. You have a little Jason here in this uh, giant like water effect, which is very, very cool. He's standing here in the ledge. Uh, and this does have removable masks. So if you wanna see his ugly mug underneath, you can. Uh, I like to explain the mask on because that's how Jason is 99.9% .9 of the movie and it's just the iconic look for him But every now and then I will you know remove the mask mostly on the one-third on the bus. I really like the mask on him But this piece is incredible and One of my favorite horror one-thirds uh, then we have Freddy Krueger Also amazing piece super incredible eyes You know glass eyes and this is mixed media. So it's you know like sculpted underneath but then uh, cloth above. He does have the Infinity Hell base. This base is massive, incredible. We have Nightmare Toys Freddy Glove. Uh, that's really cool, like prop I got there. I also have a Jason one right there. Just don't have space to display it. So it's just a little Easter egg right there with a Freddy hat. The ECC Freddy hat. Because uh, then you go here with the ECC Freddy bust. Now this bust, I did add a custom hat to it because uh, I wasn't happy with that black hat. It felt just cheap and didn't look good. And I prefer the brown versus the black. So I got this one by Luca Designs and they did a phenomenal job on this hat. It has like burn marks, very high quality, looks awesome. Really brought this bust to another level for me. But I'm a huge fan of this bust. It has the best glass eyes of any bust I've seen. Just absolutely mind-boggling good. And then I got the two one-tenth scale Freddy and Jason by Iron Studios. So a huge fan of this bust. Above you have an Elm Street. Scream Mask, also by Nightmare Toys. That one's really cool. I like the look of that on the wall. Uh, the most recent acquisition is this Michael Myers uh, wall mount bust. Uh, that's by Nico Strakos or Nag Masks. And it looks great in the wall there. Got uh, another Nightmare Toys. Uh, this was the first piece I got from them, but it is the Michael Myers knife, really from the promo poster, not necessarily the movie. And then the PCS one third. Technically, mine's a regular, but I did add the exclusives to it. I bloodied up his knife. I added a tombstone and pumpkin, as well as this Halloween logo. To the left is where we will be putting the PCS. Texas Chainsaw Massacre Leatherface one third, the Butcher version. And there's a, that's the reason I have the hammer above. Uh, but I wanted to get that version. I feel like it just would go best with my collection. So that will be the final horror piece, uh, unless we get Ghostface. Uh, then we also have a Gremlins uh, ECC here. Uh, amazing piece, very very impressive. Got a poster and a little prop right there. Super super cool. You know, and I added a lot of these this year. So if you follow the channel, you know, and you saw last year's video, I didn't have any of these really. Uh, then we got Red Sonia, also incredible piece. One of Prime One's best. Uh, that's the reason I want it here, so I can look at it all the time. And it's so incredible. I have it on a turntable because it's you can just view it from so many different angles. But it truly is an absolute masterpiece. You know, freaking love this piece. And again, I do have detailed uh, video unboxing and review of all these pieces. So if you saw a piece and you thought I didn't look at it long enough, uh, go back and watch my unboxing review. But I can't spend, you know, an hour on each piece when you have 400 statues. So, yeah. Next is Predator and Alien. We're still adding one more piece to this, uh, which is Big Chap 1 3rd. He'll go right there. Uh, so he is in route. Uh, but you have my original Sideshow Wolf Predator Grail, where I drove to Denver, Colorado to buy this bad boy. Uh, incredible piece. This is a custom one-third mask that's very impressive. But this Wolf Predator still holds up as one of my favorite statues. I freaking love this piece. It is amazing. Uh, then XM Alien. Incredible piece. Super dynamic. It's like three feet deep. Absolutely love it. Uh, above, you have a uh, jungle hunter mask prop. 
as well as Prime One's Big Chop Bust. And I love this bust, it's amazing. So that's why I'm really excited for the Big Chop One Third to go right there. I think it'll just look so good. Then you have one of my Holy Grails. This is the Cinema Cat Predator One Third Scale Statue. This is a 10 year old piece, still holds up as one of the best statues out there. An absolute grill. I did add a skull to the base. Uh, yeah, this last year, I actually originally bought a recast of this version, but I ended up uh, selling the recast locally to a gym buddy of mine and spending $5,000 to buy the original. I've since sold off uh, any of the recasts in my collection, so I do not own a single recast anymore. Uh, I'm, you know, ever since I got this, it really turned me off against recasts, and I just don't support it and don't want it. Uh, so I'm all about owning original art. Uh, and this piece is really what made me turn a new leaf. So, yeah, this piece is an absolute holy grail. Uh, underneath, we have a lot of awesome stuff as well. So, uh, we have the Sideshow Alien Egg, which we added this year. You got the Face Hugger and Chest Burster by HCG. XM Predator, awesome piece. And this one looks really good down low, actually. I think it's better actually down low. So, really good piece to put right there. Next to the Sideshow Predator bust, the Fugitive with the arm. That's really good in that garage shelf. And also looks good down low. You know, because my theme really having life-size, one-third, bust, bust, one-third. So this piece also newer this year. This is a Dog Alien from Alien 3. Uh, this is a life-size bust by Little Shop of Horrors, Chase Smith. Absolute grill. Best paint job I've ever seen on a statue. Absolutely mind-boggling good. Super, super impressive. Like when you see it in person, you're like, wow. And then of course the dog alien, maquette by Prime One. So this piece is one of Prime One's best one thirds. It is absolutely amazing. One of the best painted production pieces out there. So yeah, that's basically the alien predator wall, the whore wall, back it up so you can get a good view of the collection. So this room is a pretty decently sized, you know, room, you know, look at all this open space here uh eventually i probably will have to do a garage shelf here for when i get kong vs skull crawler or i'm sorry kong vs godzilla and khaleesi bust but for right now i'm enjoying this open space i do prefer and more open space but every collector knows that space becomes a problem and when you want more statues but you don't want to sell your old ones you're forced to in essence you know clutter up your collection so here is the main TV wall. So this consists really of just one fourth in bus and a few other things. But over here is my Terminator setup. Huge fan of T2. Uh, well, Terminator series in general, love them all. But T2 specifically is like an absolute masterpiece movie for me. It is a perfect movie. Uh, so we have the Queen Studios Arnold bust. When I spent uh, five Gs to get this bad boy but totally worth it. Absolutely love it. Next to the Sideshow one fourth, as well as a little half scale Arnold. And then behind it, you have my PlayStation 5 and Xbox One S. Uh, my only half scale in the collection, I sold off all the half scales. So if you saw those half scales last year's video, they're all gone. We only have this one now. Uh, I, I'm just a much bigger fan of one thirds, but when it does come to half scales, this is the one to own for me. I freaking love it. The Endoskeleton by Sideshow HCG. Uh, this piece is amazing, very shiny, very cool looking, and it's just awesome. Definitely a good centerpiece to my Terminator having the bust on each side. I really like that look. And then here is the Terminator bust by Sideshow. Very cool piece. And then the HCG arm, which also looks awesome here in the display so absolutely love my terminator setup got the sideshow art print as well as the pure arts battle damage bust and i will be adding the t1000 bust we'll actually do the poster in the middle move that there and do the t1000 there so we'll have the bust on each side of the poster when that eventually ships later this year uh meaning next year so some of these uh, lesser quality statues, I'm not going to dive too much deep into just because this video is already 34 minutes. We still have three bedrooms. So <laughs> uh, here you have Gentle Giant Harry Potter versus Voldemort. Very cool with the little prop. You got the Avatar as well as Darth Maul and Kylo Ren by Sideshow. That's all Sideshow. Uh, then we have the Sideshow Darth Vader bust, which eventually will be moved. And the Star Wars will be moved as well, probably all over there. 
Uh, I'll be doing the Lita one fourth and bust right there. Uh, but Vader one fourth Byron Sue's is my favorite Star Wars statue. Uh, then you have this custom Jack Sparrow and uh, also a newer acquisition this year. Uh, this year you'll notice in the room tour a lot of new silicone busks. That is the hype and what is the most impressive. I did customize this Jack Sparrow a ton and it looks amazing. And, uh, fortunately it does look good like when I'm sitting down on my couch you know playing Halo and watching movies that is my angle and I really love it. Uh, we have Dastin next to him and then Hellboy. And of course, Caesar, uh, also by Blue Box Hyper, amazing bust. Super, super realistic, real fur throughout. PCS 1 4th, a little Christmas tree to celebrate the holiday spirit and the Blu ray thing. Uh, underneath, you do have my Indiana Jones. Let me just back it up so you can see. You got Molar Rom and Indy with a little prop in between. By Sideshow, the prop is from eBay. And then, of course, this holy grail. Alexa, turn on man cave. All right, let's get some good lighting in here. Boom. All right, this is the holy grail of Jurassic Park statues out there. This is the Rotunda T-Rex 1 8th scale by Prem 1. Absolute grail. Amazing piece. Super, super impressive. You know, this piece is just so freaking cool. Absolutely massive. Look how big that base is. You know, and I do not have small little hands. So, very, very impressive. And we'll come back to this Jurassic as we go over there. We're going to go into the Marvel and DC room. I'm going to put the phone down because I do record with a phone and just stand over here so you guys can see, you know, how big this room is, what I look like in it. So... Yeah, this is the Marvel DC room. Uh, a lot has changed in this last year. Uh, we used to have tons of different movie statues, Lord of the Rings and comic-based statues. We've changed it up. It's now pretty much 99.9% .9 movie-based, as well as only Marvel and DC. We do not have any other movie in here. So, uh, and the theme really right now is to keep all Marvel down low except for right here to right there, and then everything else is DC up top. So one of the latest acquisitions I got is Ledger Joker, one-third by Prime One. Uh, so eventually what we'll do is we'll actually do the Infinity Studios bus there. I was just trying this just for some pictures, but uh, yeah, I'll be Infinity Studios bus there, and I'll move that Joker mask uh, probably actually just underneath next to Deadpool. Uh, but... Yeah, this is my Dark Knight Rises wall, really. So from right there all the way to there, Dark Knight Rises. So we only have space, really, for the Infinity Studios bust, and that's it. But you got these art prints here and some props. Queen Studios, Joker, Bank Robber Mask. The newest acquisition, which is amazing. So really awesome piece. This is actually my second favorite DC one-third scale now. You have the Bill Batman, amazing, best Bill one third in the market. I think J and D's will definitely be better quality, but conceptually, I still like this one the most. Bane, this one is the best of the Dark Knight Rises by Prime One. Joker's the best piece among all these, but he is the best among these three. Barely edging out Bell, barely. Catwoman. Uh, I mostly display the exclusive portrait because my regular one has, is like cross-eyed or not looking in the same direction. So it's really disappointing that I can't display that head. Uh, even on this one, honestly, if you look close enough, her eyes are still off-center. So whoever did QC on this is probably cross-eyed. But uh, it's still an awesome piece, especially for the price. There's definitely better Catwomans out there. I think both Queens and J&D is better. But for my particular collection, this one fits the best. Uh, if I was to get a second, uh, different one to replace this, it'd probably be Queens on the bike. It's just so expensive. So at that point, I'd probably just get the Infinity Bust, which is still the best Catwoman out there. You got Bane Extra Bust, because I did go with the Ultimate version, and a uh, life-size mask. Uh, this Spider-Man is currently sold, so we're not going to focus on that. That is just on payment plan. Uh, we'll eventually get a uh, Mero one-third or Bust to go right there, though. You got Aquaman one-third. Uh, from the Aquaman movie. I absolutely love the Aquaman movie. I did own Queen Studios Aquaman, but that one I think is a very big hype piece, but the more and more you look at it, I feel like the less and less I liked it. And 
ended up selling it and getting this one, and I like this one much more. Even though Queen's had like the silicone face, glass eyes, and whatnot, I just think everything else is very lackluster. The costume, the base, this piece is just better for me and better for my collection. Above, we do have some Endgame one tenth skills. So I'm not going to go into too much detail on these. I uh, just don't have the time, but I have a lot of them. That looks really cool. You know, I more or less did Infinity War, Vormir scene, and the final battle. Very cool. Underneath, you have the entire Endgame battle. Pretty much every Marvel character uh, from the movie. So very, very cool. Absolutely love this. I think when you only have like one one tenth, it's very lackluster and you're like, eh, what's the point? But when you have like 20 of them like this, it looks really good and it's very impressive display. Uh, you just have to have a lot of them. That's the thing, you know, but having 20 of them is like 2000 plus dollars, which is the equivalent of having, you know, two one thirds nearly, almost, not now, but here you got a Deadpool and Venom display. Uh, this is pretty much all Sideshow except for the Wolverine and Deadpool Customs. Uh, custom Wolverine, this is a Hugh Jackman version. Best Hugh Jackman statue out there. And the movie Deadpool, best movie Deadpool out there. Deadpool bust, little custom Wolverine bust. Which we'll probably eventually move that to do the Joker mask. Just move Wolverine down there. But yeah, that, uh, this display is still a work in progress. But it's coming together real nicely. This will eventually be a Black Widow display, not Guardians of the Galaxy. We'll change it to Queen's Black Widow. Uh, but yeah, right now it's Guardians of the Galaxy. So you got Groot, Mask, Baby Groot. Awesome. Uh, then you got DC, Suicide Squad above. We have Joker, Harley, Deadshot. So Harley is the best, then Deadshot, then Joker. But they're all awesome pieces. And I, I'm just displaying one head, because when you do two heads, it kind of clutters it. Uh, then you got Harley poster above. That's a custom by Victor Garduno. Underneath, you have my Avengers 1. I've had this for like seven years now, and I still absolutely love it. So very, very cool display. Avengers 1 is one of my favorite movies, and this really represents it. Even though technically Visions shouldn't be in there, whatever. He looks great there. <laughs> so... Uh, this piece is currently, you know, being sold, so we're not going to focus on it, but we have a Tony Stark. We got some different Marvel props. They're just there to make so the display doesn't look empty, but eventually this will be filled with busts and one-fourth. This is empty for future Snyder Cut, Dark Side, Steppenwolf, as well as Shazam, if he ever actually comes in. Should have had Shazam last year, but it's not. Sorry about that, folks. The UPS just came by, and... One of my fans bought me something. Couldn't believe what I just got. I'm going to make a video on it. Uh, but yeah, let's go into the remainder of this room. Uh, here we got the Justice League set up. This is without Superman. I may or may not buy black suit Superman. I'm still leaning towards no for space reasons and the fact it's the same pose. And I hate having the same statue that's a different color, but same pose. That drives me kind of crazy. Uh, but... I still feel like this works because that's how the team was 95% of the movie. Superman, spoiler alert, didn't come in until the very end. So I feel like this does work really good. But you have Flash, Cyborg. You know, he does light up, which is really cool. Uh, Batman, he's the best. Wonder Woman's my second favorite. That's the ultimate. We got the bus behind. Put some heads back there. Got the mother boxes and props. And then Aquaman with a life-size trident. So yeah, there's the Justice League. Absolutely love it. We'll then should be adding likely just Shazam, Steppenwolf, Darkseid. If we ever get a Black Adam, definitely get Black Adam. Uh, and then we're going uh, to, this is a big part of what I've been working on the last like month or two, uh, but really building the ultimate Trinity wall. So, you know, I ended up buying Wonder Woman on horse as well as Infinity Studios Batman and Queen Studios Wonder Woman. Uh, the Wonder Woman was always part of my plan. Uh, I never actually planned to buy Infinity Studios Batman and Superman, but, you know, stuff happens, and here we are. Uh, I'm currently waiting on, A, the Wonder Woman poster, which has been taking forever, and then, uh, seriously, two-day shipping has been three weeks. And then Superman bus, which I'm so excited to get, because I feel like this is going to be one of my best displays in my whole collection. Uh, but we have the Infinity Studios Batman bus. This thing 
you know, pictures, videos do not do it justice. It is one of the most impressive pieces out there. And then the Batman one third tactical suit, which looks awesome. You got a God killer sword right now. An Avengers one poster was oh, drives me crazy. I don't have that poster yet. Uh, the Queen Studios bus. This is on a like a cake stand more or less, but a golden riser to get her presence better. Uh, this is one of my favorite busts in my collection. Absolutely phenomenal piece. I think Queen really upped their game on this bust. My favorite piece of my collection, Wonder Woman on horse, five feet tall. Absolutely amazing, amazing piece. Uh, it is so freaking cool. Let me actually, hold on just one sec. I want to show you guys just how big this is. Uh, let me make sure you guys can see that good. Yeah, you should be able to. Uh, but yeah, this piece is freakishly huge. Now, I am no small dude. I am nearly 6'4", 250 pounds. And as you can see, this thing is huge. And that is what makes it so impressive is the sheer size and everything going on with the horse, uh, the whole design of the base, Wonder Woman's pose, her outfit, you know, beautiful sculpted hair, beautiful face. Uh, the sword is real metal. The God Killer looks awesome. I love the flow of her hair, though. Just absolutely phenomenal piece. Such a grill. Freaking love it to death. Uh, and this is my favorite, like, garage shelf display in my entire collection. Uh, we just need the Wonder Woman poster, which drives me crazy. We also have a life-size, uh, you know, her lasso of truth right there. Uh, but this really is my favorite display. We just need the poster fixed. Uh, but when it comes to like bus one third, nothing beats this pair. Nothing. Uh, this is where Infinity Superman bust will obviously go. We also did coins in the front of each bust. That came from the DC collection. Superman one third. So this is really just my focal point for Superman. You know, bust one third. And this one third is awesome. Uh, then you go underneath. Uh, we got... Ultron by King Arts, Gentle Giant Black Widow on a custom base, Hulk Buster, which was a newer acquisition this year with Hulk, and that's really, really impressive. Now, Hulk Buster is freaking amazing. Uh, then you have more or less like a Thor, then Civil War line. Uh, so you have Captain, Bucky, Falcon, props. I love to do props with Marvel. Iron Man, War Machine, Black Panther, Queen Studios, Civil War Spidey. Iron Studios, Black Widow, Vision from King Arts, and then the bust. So very, very cool. And then this is more or less my big main Marvel wall because it's all Marvel down low and up top. So you start with Hulk bust, newer acquisition this year. Uh, this is a piece you really just want to get up close and personal and view it like that. It is really, really impressive in person. Uh, mostly... What's impressive is just the base, uh, the face. That face is huge and super detailed. I really love that face. Uh, one of, if not my favorite faces in my entire bus collection. Above, Iron Studios, Iron Spidey. We put the Queen Extra Head Gauntlet, Ant-Man and the Wasp. So very cool. Uh, and then here is like my main Trinity with bus on each end with Thanos. So I'm a huge Thanos fan. Uh, here's the Queen Studios bust. This is an absolutely amazing bust. Battle damaged Mark 50. Love it. Got a little prop right here. Uh, then the uh, entire Iron Studios line for the Trinity. And I tried to display this exactly like the movie scene where th that's the reason I'm not displaying Cap with his hammer and broken shield. Uh, doing full shield, Thor double hammer, him with his mask off because when Thanos first entered and he did that scene, this was their exact pose, just like that. Boom. Uh, and then, of course, you got a prop behind. And then Queen Studios Thanos. I'm currently still missing the extra head where he's, like, smiling. Uh, and so eventually I'll get that. Uh, it's in route. It's just probably going to take six months to get. Uh, but this is an amazing piece, uh, for sure. I really do like it. Queen Thanos, which is my favorite uh, Queen Studios bust. It barely edges out Wonder Woman. Uh, I just love Thanos so much, and this just has so many impressive things on the bust that I just love it to death. So especially next to this, it's like such an ultimate one-fourth to bust companion. Probably my favorite in my entire collection of bust to one-fourth.
bust to one third, that. Bust to one fourth, this pair. Uh, I, I just think that's unbeatable. Uh, then you have Queen Loki bust, also a newer acquisition, as well as Loki one fourth. You got the scepter and uh, Captain Shield poster. So very, very cool. Uh, and then we have Queen Black Panther and Captain Marvel bust, along with the little Endgame nano gauntlet in between. You got some props. Uh, this is like my ultimate Thanos display because underneath you have the two Iron Studios with the Hot Toys. And these are super, super impressive. Absolutely love it. Alexa, turn on Marvel statue lights. Alexa, turn on Marvel statues. All right, here we go. Get the light light up going. So you got the Queen Iron Spidey bust along with Iron Studios Spider-Man Far From Home, my favorite Marvel 1-4 scale statue to date. And this does turn the light up on for both the gauntlet, Captain Marvel, that gauntlet, and the two Iron Mans. So very, very cool. Absolutely love my Marvel and DC collection. Such a... You know, big Marvel and DC fan. I love superhero movies. So I made a lot of changes this year to this room. Really wanted to have like the ultimate Marvel DC statue, like movie statue room. And I feel like I've done a pretty darn good job in what I've, you know, accomplished. So we are limited on space, but we are definitely going to be getting in hopefully a Captain America, Thor, Doctor Strange bust, uh, Doctor Strange one fourth, Hawkeye one fourth. And, you know, finish up the DC. Alexa, turn off movie statue room lights. Alexa, turn off Marvel statues. All right. Don't want those running while we're doing the rest of the video. All right. So then we go into the Jurassic Park hallway. Uh, so we got the Indominus Rex. Very, very cool. Eventually that may be on the chopping block, but most likely not. Uh, then you have... The one tenth Iron Studios T Rex with two Velociraptors, the Dilophosaurus, the one fifth T Rex above by Chronicle. Very, very cool T Rex display underneath the Mosasaurus and Blue. Eventually, we'll be doing the Indominus Rex right where Blue's at and move Blue probably right there. And if we have to move Indiana Jones or I don't know, I'll figure it out. Uh, the Dilophosaurus will go right there at the one. Six scale version. Here we got one six raptor. Love this piece. This is like my ultimate little raptor display. Got the claw, the baby raptor, the life size custom bust, and the one six. Plus all the little one tens and the velociraptor sign. So very, very cool. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment. We're going to check out the Mortal Kombat Transformer room. Dun dun dun. So if you're unaware, I am a huge Mortal Kombat fan. And I do also love Transformers and Ninja Turtles, and there's a lot of love. Uh, but let me set the phone down and uh, stand real quickly so you guys can see. Here is the room. This is probably my smallest room in the whole collection. Uh, but this room is basically complete. We might add a few 110 skills. Uh, otherwise, it's uh, completed. The only thing I would potentially change is upgrade. Uh, I am always up for selling older statues to fund newer, better statues. But here's the main, like, Mortal Kombat classic wall. Uh, you got all five of the PCS one-thirds. Now, they did announce uh, Katana, Melina, Jade, but they're all basically identical statues. So I'm definitely not going to get the Katana or Melina. I may consider Jade, but if I do get Jade, I will have to potentially change out this shelving to garage shelving or move some things because I technically can't fit the three ninjas inside that and that would give me obviously space above uh but we'll see I want to see how good the proto is and they did say pre-order is in the coming months uh of all these though my favorite is of course Sub-Zero and Scorpion you got Katana she's actually probably my least favorite but keep in mind these are all still very amazing statues Sub-Zero, absolutely love it. That severed skull, super, super impressive. Really love Reptile, especially that reptilian head. I have not changed his head once. Day one, that is the head to display. I've changed his hands a, a few times. Scorpion, I've been displaying the skull for about four years and I just changed it to the masked head uh, about a month ago. And I definitely love the masked head, very impressive. 
I still think I like the skull better, but I do love that portrait. And then Melina, I switch her head off regularly. Katana, I never do the unmasked. Melina, I like doing both because this unmasked portrait is very detailed, but I also love just the masked look as well. Got a Shao Kahn mask with a poster and the arcade one up. Underneath you have one fourth Goro. Shao Kahn, I do have Mortal Kombat one through four posters behind. Uh, Shao Kahn is the best one fourth skill uh, classic. And after that, probably Kintaro, Goro, Raiden. And there you have Luke Kang. Underneath we got some different displays like props and whatnot. We did add the one tenth Shao Kahn which is very cool. Uh, so I'll, I'll probably end up adding Scorpion Sub-Zero and if they make uh, any of the other like OGs, you know, like anyone from that, I would buy it. Uh, Cause I want to complete the original MK cast. Uh, here you got the original four ninjas and then the cyborg originals, Kentaro, Jada Molina. So that is the entire classic line there. They have not done any new statues since the cyborgs. There has been some customs out there by Peach Dean that honestly I would buy, but he won't sell to me. Uh, so unfortunately just have to pass on those, but I know he made a freaking Shang Tsung and a Motaro and I would have bought both, but he won't sell to me. So just have to pass, so whatever. Uh, next we go into the ninjas. Uh, I'm a huge fan of these. These were some of my first 1-4 scales by Prime 1. Michelangelo, Donatello, Raphael, and Leonardo. And of course, Master Splinter above. Uh, this was a newer acquisition. I believe actually all this is newer this year, if I remember correctly. But he's the most recent one, really. Drift from Transformers 5. This is more or less my Transformers 4 and 5 display because Optimus was the same design in both movies. So I don't need to get a fifth version when this fourth is the same armor. Do have a life-size head, well, human life-size. That is technically a Bluetooth speaker. You got Lockdown and of course Grimlock and he is super awesome. Had that thing for a long time. And it's still actually my number one most watched YouTube video of like 600,000 plus views, it's wild. Uh, who knows, maybe this video will get more. Let's have our fingers crossed. Here you got, uh, my goal really was to have the original OG team for Transformers, uh, you know. So, Jazz, Ratchet, Ironhide, Bumblebee, Optimus Prime, had to get Sentinel Prime, uh, cause he's just so impressive. And these Transformers, you can look out for hours. They are so freaking detailed and cool. It's not even funny how awesome these pieces are. So uh, super, super impressive. Got these different proximity pieces, even back here. I, I really do put a lot of thought into how I display my statues for my limited space. You know, the fact I do the cars with the little bus in between, you know, and the two movies on each side with the little Optimus bus, the prop in between, posters above. You know, I really uh, spent a lot of time thinking the best way to display my statues, how I like it. And I feel this uh, is the best way. I mean, I would love to do the Prime 1 art prints, but they're so expensive, like 450 bucks. But if they weren't so expensive, I would do all four right there. I'd do Megatron, Shockwave, Optimus, and Bumblebee. Shockwave is one of my other, uh, probably third favorite statue in my collection, you know, next to Cinema Cat and Wonder Woman on Horse. Uh, this is the Holy Grail, uh, really main centerpiece to this room. This thing is out of this world amazing. One of the newer acquisitions, I believe I had this a previous year, but man alive is this piece impressive. And then Megatron, super, super cool. I do love the newer Megatron probably a little bit more, so I don't know if I'll sell this and get that newer one in. I still love this one to death and I hate to sell it, but man, I want that new Dark Side of the Moon one a lot. Uh, there are some design features I like better about this one though, like his cannon instead of the shotgun. And then Starscream is Trusted Companion, which I still love that statue. I love all my Transformers a ton. And I'd love to add more, but they are extremely expensive and Space Hogs, they take up a lot of space. So let's get to the last room so we can top off this video. 
Uh, here we got a little like Greek themed uh, mini hallway, very limited space here. To the right, we do have some Zelda posters and some props because I love Zelda. Uh, but you have a custom Troy Achilles bus. This is a Brad Pitt version, removable mask, but for goodness sakes, don't remove it. Uh, this one, the ARH 1 4th, uh, technically this is a like concept piece. It's not really movie. Uh, this is the movie version of Gerard Butler from 300. I did do a 300 poster above and just a random Trojan type shield. Even did little props and movies in between. Uh, you'll notice you'll see these all throughout. These are air purifiers, uh, help suck in the dust. I do dust regularly using a dust blower and you know, dust about every six to eight weeks. Uh, Lead is here temporarily. She will be replacing Darth Vader. Uh, and eventually I'll probably actually do Bruce Lee right here uh, by Interbay. That Blitzway, that's coming soon. But I do love this Lita. I think it's an awesome looking statue. Very, very cool. Uh, that one is actually sold uh, baby doll. She's on payment plan right now. So she is gone uh, selling her. Uh, so this room really is dedicated to Dragon Ball Z and video games. Uh, two of my biggest loves in my life. You know, I'm a huge gamer and huge into Dragon Ball Z. I still remember running home from freaking middle school, elementary, because, you know, my bus stop was like a mile from my house. I'd run to my house to watch Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT, and I freaking loved it. If I missed one episode, I'd be so mad. But here we got this Zelda display. Uh, these are my first four figures, except for the Trident. Uh, and then you have first four figures with a custom link. Absolutely love this display. Very impressive. Uh, and then the link on series as well as Majora's Mask. So very, very cool. Absolutely love it. Really looking forward to playing Skyward Sword HD as soon as I buy a Switch next year. Waiting for the new Zelda before I buy a Switch because I want to get like a Zelda themed one. This will eventually probably be either Dragon Ball Z and video game or just Dragon Ball Z. Kind of leaning towards video game underneath, Dragon Ball Z up top. So, yeah. Uh, right here is where you have Warcraft. These are technically movie pieces, but they come from a video game. So I feel it works. Uh, but these are some of the best 1-4 scale statues out there. Detail-wise, is just unbeatable. Uh, this one was added this year. Super, super impressive. Just absolutely amazing piece. Duratan, one of my favorite one four scales. Freaking amazing. Uh, and then you have, and those are by Damn Toys. This one's by Fizzin. Duratan. Uh, unfortunately, I can't display his axe because of height. And if I lower the shelf too much, it doesn't look as good. I feel like it looks better like this. Even though I can't, I'm not displaying his axe, but I did buy an axe right there as a prop. Orgrim, very awesome statue. All these are super impressive in person. And we'll do video games before we do get to Dragon Ball Z. So just to show you, you know, how this looks. And I'm going to, again, stand over here so you guys can see how I look in this room. This room is a pretty decent sized room. So there's quite a good amount of space. And there's a bunch of open space here and more in the Dragon Ball Z setup. This area is a little limited, but there's a lot of space once you get to the core of the room. Uh, and I don't plan to put any shelves in the middle of this room. Not by any means. Uh, but this display is still a work in progress. We're still adding a few pieces. I still can't believe Virgil hasn't arrived. It's nearly four months. Uh, but we have the Witcher line. I hope uh, if you're a fan of Witcher, you saw the new season. You enjoyed it. I loved it. The Netflix series. But Eridan. You know, these are all from the Witcher 3, the Wild Hunt video game. You got Ciri, Geralt, Yennefer, the Holy Trinity of the Witcher. So, huge fan of these pieces. Look awesome. And then have an Aridin there. Someone offered to buy Aridin for nearly double what I paid, and I almost pulled the trigger. I'm glad I didn't, because I love that piece. Uh, Devil May Cry. These are newer to the collection this year. So, you got Nero. Super, super freaking cool piece. Dante. We're getting Virgil, so we'll have that holy trinity. Uh, Dante, absolutely amazing. One of my favorite video game statues. Look how massive that shotgun is. And then uh, Snake Eyes. I don't know if this will stay here or move. It may move eventually. Uh, but for now, it's right here. And it looks great. Snake Eyes with Storm Shadow by Prime One. We'll go over these video games real quick. Uh, we got first four figures. Solid Snake from Metal Gear Solid. 
Love Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, Halo, of course, one of my greatest loves in life. If any of you want to play with me on Xbox Live, my gamer tag is Flankster117. Uh, I mostly play Halo 1 and 2. Mostly 2. Uh, but I still love Halo 1. Uh, and that Cortana is like a little... I don't even know what that is. I got off Amazon, the mask. Uh, that helmet is the Halo 2 limited edition, or Halo 3, actually. And then you have Uncharted and Tomb Raider, Nathan Drake, Laura Croft. Uh, this is by Sideshow. This is by Gaming Heads. Uh, first four figures, Nightmare. Very cool piece. As well as Samus from Metroid. Eventually, I may end up selling these two if I run super low on space. Those would be on the chopping block. Last of Us, waiting on Ellie from Gaming Heads, as well as Prime One's uh, Last of Us. But this clicker is super impressive. I may actually even cancel Gaming Heads and just do the custom Ellie. Depends which ships sooner. Uh, then you have Neo, William, love Neo, love Bloodborne, amazing games, very fun, very difficult, very challenging, but very fun video games. Uh, and then Dante, still one of the last statues I'm trying to sell. If anyone is interested, 600 bucks shipped, uh, which by the way is a phenomenal deal for that incredible statue. Uh, but I'm only selling it because I don't want to have two Dantes. I just want to have one of each character. Uh, and so... Yeah, that's the only reason I'm selling it. It's not that I don't love the statue or the character. I just want to have one of each character. I don't want to have two of each outside of Mortal Kombat. You know, because obviously you have multiple Scorpion and Sub-Zeros. Above, we have a little Ip Man, Ninja Gaiden, Raiden, Kung Lao. Yeah, and here we got another Ninja Gaiden. Just put it there so the display's not empty, but eventually there'll be Jin Sakai by Prime 1. We got Mortal Kombat 9 display, and then Mortal Kombat 10. So those are my two favorite Mortal Kombat's. Mortal Kombat 9 was my favorite. Uh, you know, I, I was just so into Mortal Kombat 9. I was a god at that game. I would play it on my PS Vita at work and master every combo of every character. I legit knew, like, all of Cyrax's 90% combos. Scorpion vs. Sub-Zero. Love that display. And, of course, the bus. Very impressive. And then we got Ermac. Then we got a little movie sort of display with uh, the movie, the mask, the freaking blade, and a little more Kant logo. This is my centerpiece to my room here. Uh, Goro one third, one of my favorite statues. One I'd grab in. If there was a fire, I'd probably be grabbing this. Uh, just because that is what got me into collecting. Absolutely love it. Massive, massive piece. As you can see, it just towers over one four scales. And then this is uh, my computer desk where I work. So I do work from home. Uh, a lot of people ask what my job is and whatnot, but I'm never going to tell you guys where I work or anything like that. It's, you know, my business. Uh, but I work from home uh, on a laptop right here, as well as in my other room. But I work mostly in here. Uh, but I got Scorpion Sub-Zero, two of my favorite characters. Scorpion being one of my favorite characters of all time, especially MKX version. So that's the reason this is here. You got... Quan Chi, Koto Khan, and Sub-Zero. And I do have artist proof for all four of these. This empty giant display will be reserved for Prime One, Leon, Claire, Kratos, Balder. So very excited for that. And then we go into the heart and core of my Dragon Ball Z collection. So this display, this is Ikea Detolfs, in case you're wondering. I do not have the doors on. And some of the heavier statues, I do double glass because, you know, right there, I took out a glass. Took out a glass. So I had two extra glasses. I put it for that statue, that statue, the two heaviest ones. All the other ones are, you know, I don't worry about weight. Uh, the heaviest ones, you know, like those two are down low. And that is top shelf, which can hold a lot more weight. Uh, but I do like to theme my Dragon Ball Z per saga in order of when it actually occurred. So starting with Saiyan Saga, going into Gohan vs. Dodoria, uh, Frieza collecting the Dragon Balls, Vegeta vs. Zarbon. So this all is chronologically correct. And those are two of the newer statues, This uh, very recent actually. Very happy to have Vegeta vs. Zarbon. I always regretted selling that, uh, but very happy to get it back thanks to StatuePro.com for those two statues. And then... Uh, this uh, DBZ does focus really on VK, just, you know, they no longer produce Dragon Ball Z statues, but I absolutely loved what they did with DBZ-16. It's still some of my favorite designs. They had phenomenal sculptors and painters and the way they connected them. So this is how I'm doing Frieza Form 3. Uh, it's going a little bit onto the garage shelf. 
uh, but it works and I still like it. Some people will disagree, but this is how I like it and this is how I can display it to where I actually still keep Piccolo in the display. So, should it affect Leon Claire at all? Uh, then you go into Frieza Final Form. Goku going Super Saiyan, elbowing Frieza, Trunks killing Frieza, spoiler alert. Vegeta killing Android 19, Android 16, 18 versus Vegeta, 17 versus Piccolo. Cell Form 1, Cell Form 2, Cell Form 2, Final Form versus Gohan, and of course the final Kamehameha scene. Then we do go into Boo Saga. I still actually am waiting for one DBZ statue. It's in transit. It is Vegito versus Boo, which will go either right there or right there and move Gohan there, go Tanks there. Depends if it A fits and B how I like it there. Because I know Go Tanks fits and looks good there. Uh, I just want to get the you know, the one in first. Uh and then Boo Saga is really consisted of all of that and then those two shelves. But I really like how this looks. KD Deborah versus Gohan, Goku versus Vegeta. This was happening at the exact same time. They transitioned into this, you know, part of Vegeta vs. Boo, Final Atonement, Go Tanks, Gohan, and Goku. So, and I got the three main posters. So I absolutely love this display. I do not plan to ever sell my main DBZ display to focus on one fourth. Uh, this is my heart and core, you know. One of my big focuses and my entire DBZ collecting for the last eight years. So I have trimmed this down a ton. If you watch videos from years ago, I had details from right there to right there of all one six scales. But now it's just this. And I don't plan to shrink this anymore. And I don't plan to grow it anymore. This is it. This is the heart and core of my one fourth wall, though. So above this display is final, never changing. You got Majin Vegeta. The bust in one fourth with poster. You know, this is like the ultimate Majin Vegeta display for me personally. Uh, then the Goku versus Vegeta with poster behind that just looks so good. Uh, the Goku J Ross bust with Goku one fourth, Dragon Fist. So, absolutely love this display so, so much. Underneath is mostly going to be focus focused on KD collectibles, so we'll eventually probably move androids and. Probably not, though. I really like them there. I don't know. We'll eventually definitely move that Frieza uh, to do KD Frieza there. I might move those two, maybe. Uh, KD Piccolo will go there. But we do have Gohan right here. KD Goku, which is a newer acquisition. Uh, Frieza, which is newer this year by Reborn. This Frieza is really good. Really, really good. Androids, which I just barely got. I'm absolutely loving them. Very, very cool pieces. And then, of course, MRC, Vegeta, and Trunks. Both these are newer this year, and both are actually prototypes. So thanks to MRC for sending me these prototypes for review. Absolutely love them both. Just such solid sculpts and paint works. And then KD Cell and Boo. And, of course, we got some little one-tenth, one, they were about one-tenth figure art zeros. And then Broly. Broly will eventually probably be moved for space. I was actually even thinking of doing Broly inside the Estuva. Uh, otherwise, he goes right here. The only problem with that is then Goku sticks out a little bit. Broly is still the best DBZ statue today, though. This thing is absolutely freakishly huge. But, yeah, that is the DBZ collection. So, we'll eventually do DBZ. Possibly all of this or maybe just the top two. We'll see. I uh, need to get some more pieces in hands and rearrange some things. Still waiting on Prime 1 Goku, Prime 1 Vegeta. We got Tasume Frieza on PO, KD Frieza, KD Vegeta Final Flash, KD Gohan when I'm coming my ha. So we still got a lot coming in. Uh, we still have a lot of statues on pre-order. I believe I have over 40 pre-orders, potentially more coming. Uh, so we do, you know, I do try to do regular content for you guys, but it is difficult. But that is the collection though, folks. So a lot has changed since last year. Uh, so many changes. So if you watch this entire hour and 15 minute video, thanks for sticking through it. Uh, I'm sure most people probably be skipping through a lot, but uh, yeah, I know in the last big room tour I did, I mentioned I have the world's greatest statue collection. In all honesty, I only said that to ho hoping the video will go viral. Uh, I do think I have one of the best collections in the world, but not the best. I have seen some absolutely phenomenal collections, one out of South Africa. 
and it just blew my freaking mind. Uh, you know, I obviously don't have the best collection in the world, uh, but I do think I'm probably in the top 100. Uh, but at the end of the day, who cares? Uh, just enjoy what you collect, and I love my collection. I hope you guys do too. If you have any suggestions or whatnot, feel free to drop a comment below. Hope you enjoy this video, and I will see you guys on the next one. Have a Merry Christmas. Take care.